Alright. Hello, hello everybody and welcome to stream! Uh, my entire existence. Hello everybody, welcome in. Welcome to stream. Woo! Goodness, what's happening there? Hello everybody, hello. Welcome in. Welcome to stream. Hi. Hello. Oh, there's a lot of you today. <laughs> hello! I've awoken. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been in a deep slumber for two entire weeks. Um... But hello everybody. Hi, welcome in. Welcome to today's stream. I assume there's a lot of you here today because you like the topic. Um, today we're going to be doing a character concept sheet. I'm going to be talking about the difference between a normal rotation sheet and a concept sheet um, because there is a difference. Um, and I'll be going over some general stuff to make your sheets look more professional and some layout tips and stuff like that. Um, so we will be going over those today. I'm also going to be designing a character on the spot because you guys voted 60% of you. It's usually more split than that. Um, 60% percent of you decided that you wanted me to design a character on the spot compared to a character that I already had so we'll be doing that together as well so I'll be uh, bringing you through that kind of um that kind of process I am gonna get you guys to vote because I have two ideas and I don't know which one to do <laughs> so I'm gonna get you guys to vote to see which one um you want me to do yeah corn corn's had a had a busy busy time in our uh, campaign um but all right y'all before we get going you guys know the drill because if you didn't know our growing community is filled with tons of artners and we artners have to stick together so if you're an artner too be sure to check the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings we can get critique guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a youtube channel we are an art school too so if you'd like to support us so we can keep making free content consider supporting us by becoming a youtube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or supporting us on patreon for as little as two dollars per month where you can get access to tons of perks like my working files critique sessions class recordings and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots so be sure to check those out before they are gone yo i did it <laughs> yo that was smooth that was smooth that was like i didn't even mess up that was that was awesome y'all who've been here for a long time i was that was great i didn't mess up once <laughs> let's go anyway <laughs> God, thank you thank you thank you i'm taking a bow you can't see me taking a bow but i'm taking a bow i just showed up hi evie i did it I did it, y'all. Amazing. 
<laughs> anyway, before we get going with the illustration, guys, you know what time it is. It is submissions time. It's art submissions time. This is the second last week of Junicorn, where you can submit your work on the Discord, and I can take a look at it, and we can be, we can look over some unicorn art. Uh, this first piece is by Chief Flame, who I haven't seen in a very long time. I, I'm glad to see your work again. Um, it's Chief Flame in the Discord. Uh, this is a gorgeous piece. I love the take on like a dark unicorn. This like, like, dark knight kind of character the very very deep atmosphere this is beautiful it's beautifully rendered gorgeous atmosphere chief flame does it again like <laughs> like this artist i've seen a few times um uh their work is always stunning always really really well done they're really good with monsters so it doesn't it's not a surprise to me that they're really good with like unicorns and horses as well um this is beautiful 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 job well done thank you so much for submitting this next piece is by our very own Evie, um, Evie Anon in the Discord. I love this concept of like the sword as the horn um, for this unicorn. I was like, I was on the edge of making a reference, but I can't <laughs> because it's it, it's it's a, a game that came out too recently, and for those who know, you know, but <laughs> I can't make that comparison. But um, because it's a deep spoiler. But um, yeah, this is a really fun fun concept i love the idea of a, a sword horn you know yeah <laughs> you know for those who know you understand you understand me if you know you know um it's partly the inspiration oh fantastic all right well there you go <laughs> um no spoilers anybody who knows you're just part of that fun little club um but yes excellent job beautiful work thank you so much for submitting i thought of that as well <laughs> This next piece is by Keith in the Discord. I think it's really funny that, like you said, you say this is a PNG, so it's like the background is transparent, so it's like you get the little, you get to see what my little rainbow, uh, my <laughs> rainbow transition looks like behind this unicorn. Um, it's a skeleton unicorn, a horse skeleton. Excellent work on that skeleton. You did a really good job. Um, I'm a big fan of bones. Like, <laughs> you give me a bone horse, I'm like, that's fantastic. I, I got a, one of my friends got me a, a fox skull for my birthday and I'm, I'm cherishing it. I love it. So I'm like, I love bones. I love anything to do with skeletons and stuff like that. So this is a beautiful one. Um, excellent job. Thank you so much for submitting. This next one is by Kiri. Kiri in the, Kiri, Kiri in the Discord. I'm so sorry. Um, this is gorgeous. They said that this is like a corrupted unicorn. Um, I love this silhouette. I love this like almost vulture like unicorn. The long flowing mane and the long flowing tail. You can see the wings in the back. It's such bright colors. It really hurts your eyes. But like what they did a really good job of is that balance. Like there's the really bright colors that you see, but then everything else is very muted and very dark. So it's not super like it, it's not overpowering like it's meant to be super super bright and super intense but it's actually not that bad just because of what surrounds it right and then again like this is just such a really fun design i love like the beak like um oh it's not main what do you call it the beak like muzzle um very well done excellent work thank you so much for submitting this final one is by Roxy in the Discord. I am, like, I'm actually a really big fan of, like, the way too thin limbs on a unicorn. Like, I love the, like, really, like, swooping silhouette with, like, super, super thin limbs. I also love the, like, really thin tail with just the tuft of um, hair at the end. That's, like, a really, <laughs> that's a love of mine as well. Um... And, like, I love how, like, smooth this anatomy is. I love how whimsical and how, like, elegant these unicorns look. It's a really, really well done. It's very dreamy. It's very dreamy the way that you colored it as well. It's almost watercolor-like. Um, excellent work. Thank you so much for submitting. So, for everybody, if you don't know, this is the art submissions in the beginning. If you'd like a chance for your work to be submitted for next week, you could check out our Discord, exclamation point Discord, join with the other art nerds to have a chance to submit your work. Um, there is a theme for every month last week, or this week, this coming week is the final week for Unicorns, so the last week um, for you to submit stuff in relation to Unicorns. And then the week after we will be changing up the theme and we will do something different for July. But yes, thank you all. Thank you, Chief Flame. 
Uh, Evie, Keith, Carrie, and Roxy, thank you also so much for submitting, and thank you to everybody who submitted who wasn't in the intro. All right. Excellent. Brilliant. Well done. Okay, I'm giving you guys a poll immediately off the bat because I have two ideas that I want to do, but I'm not too sure which one to do. So I do want to do a biped. I'm not going to be doing somebody on four legs. I'm sorry. Um, but I want to... I have two ideas, right? I have two ideas. One is I wanted to do a like fawn kind of character, but instead of a deer, I wanted to do a unicorn, you know, to match the unicorn thing. I wanted to do some kind of unicorn fawn character, or I wanted to do a dragonborn. Like I wanted to do um, a dragonborn character. If you don't know what D&D &D is, uh, a dragonborn character is like a dragon humanoid kind of character. Um, the poll's just gonna be on here, Levi. It, 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 I'll just put it up in a second. Um, so the dragonborn, I wanna take inspiration from, um, Oh gosh, what do you call it? Amnaga? Like the, the Thai, um, like mythical creature. So like it's either, it's going to be between like a unicorn fawn or like a dragonborn Thai Naga. <laughs> yeah. Do you see why it's hard for me to choose too? <laughs> All right. So let's start a poll. Um, let me create that. So that's a unicorn fawn Naga dragonborn. I cannot do both. No. A dragonborn. Yes. So if you don't know what D uh, Dungeons and Dragons are, a dragonborn is like a dragon character. So they're like, they are bipedal. Um, but I really like to make my dragonborn here. I'll, I'll give you an example of a dragonborn just so you can see it. Cause I, I've designed a bunch of them. Um, because my D and D character is a dragonborn. Give me a moment. Concepts, D and D. There we go. So these are like, these are dragonborn. So they're like these kind of biped dragon-like characters. I've already, I've like, a uh, Korn's backstory was broken open for the past two sessions. So we um, got to see some of the characters from his backstory, but these are dragonborn. Um, I like to make my dragonborn very heavily dragon-like. Um, so again, so either a dragonborn or a fawn. This looks sick. Thank you. Unicorn fawn idea. I saw a lot of other artists doing like unicorn fawns and I was like, I kind of want to do one. But then I saw, like one of my commissioners wanted me to create a monster that had two naga as the tails. And I was like, ooh, this tie, <laughs> this tie um, aesthetic is really, really fun. T-H-A-I, by the way, it's a, it, like, the, like the place. Um, this th tie mythology is really cool. So I was like, I want to, now I'm like, I want to make a dragonborn like that. Cool, they don't have a tail, that's good. See, I personally like it when the dragonborns have tails. Like, the, in the Tal'Dorei setting, some of them have tails and some of them don't. Um, so my dragonborn has a tail, but not all of them do. I'm always upset when they don't have a tail. I'm like, oh, what a waste of time. Um, but alright, that's gonna be- I'll end the poll right there, it seems to be ending. So you guys want the dragonborn, sounds good. I uh, will design that then today. So I do have that off the top of my head. This one's gonna be a lot more difficult, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm okay with doing that. Unicorn dragonborn mashup? No. To be fair, a, a naga does have like a big horn on the front of its nose, so that's okay. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, I'm so sorry. Um... It also makes sense in terms of balance. In some regards, yes. I think that with Dragonborn, because they're bipeds, it's not totally necessary. But I'm like, either or. Can you draw one with a tail? I was probably going to give it a tail. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I don't want to not give it a tail. I'm like, I like tails. But all right. So first thing you probably notice, right? I'm actually going to change the background a little bit. But the first thing you notice... Um, hey, do you see any color present? There's no color, right? Exactly. This is because my background is going to be kept in black and white. Um, the reason for this um, is because when you are designing any character, when you have a concept sheet, you want to make sure that their colors are the most recognizable they can be. Um, and if you have a super bright, colorful background, that is going to interfere with the colors of your character. This is called Chevrolet's Rule of Color Interaction. Um, if you have... I, this is my biggest pet peeve, is when I see people do character sheets and character concept sheets, and they have their character on a bright, 
gradient, like it's multicolored background, or even just a single solid color background. You never want to do that. When you're doing any kind of character art, you want to keep the background neutral. And this is just so that the background doesn't interfere with the actual character itself. Um, so yeah, Chevrolet's rule of color interaction. I can just write that down. Chevrolet's. Oh God. I might have spelled that wrong. Rule of color interaction. Which is just like colors will look different when they interfere with each other in different ways. Right. So with this specifically, the reason why you don't want a colored background is because you don't want the background to interfere with the character itself. Right. Your character on a blue background will look different than, a, than your character on a red background. Right. Same difference. Yeah, yeah, uh, don't worry, MD. I'm gonna be do going through it the entire time. Uh, Hyrule Slime, you can look up the difference between a Ravenite and a, Dr and a Draco Blood. That's the Taldori setting, so it's it's different depending on... Like, for, like, the base Dragonborn, yes, that's correct, but if you... Depending on what setting you go into, it's different. So, like, there's a history with the Critical Role setting where it's, like, you can... They have, like... There's two versions of the Dragonborn. It's like how they call a Leon and a Katari, right? It's a different setting. It depends on where you are. What you're doing, you can still keep it interesting with gradients. Yeah, I would still say that it's still interesting without the gradient. The thing that you shouldn't... You should not be focusing on the background on a character concept sheet, right? It Like, your character concept sheet should not... Like, the background is not the thing you want to focus on. It's the character itself, right? Let me just look up Sanaga because I need some references. Isn't that color theory? Yes, it's Chevrolet's rule of color interaction. That is part of color theory. Okay. Let me just take a look-see here. I have references opened off to the side that you guys can't see. Um, but I am looking at some Thai things to make sure that I have this inspiration going on. Um... So, if you don't know what a naga is, a naga is a, 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 a wow, it's a serpent in Thai mythology. Um, I, uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a look at its overall, like, body and the overall shape of it, right? So, I want to take inspiration from what I'm looking at, right? Very, very serpentine, very, very, there's a lot of curling, a lot of, like, curling, um, bits to it. There's a lot of, it's very gilded right a lot of like it's very outlined which is a weird way to describe it but it's true there's a lot of outlined parts to it so i really want to take that into account while i'm working on this um but i'm really going to take that serpentine kind of body into account so what i'm going to do is i'm going to bring that into the silhouette the first thing you generally want to do when you're coming up with some kind of character is like have just a general silhouette off to the side it tends to help I kind of want a body that looks like this. I want that very serpentine, very snake-like look to keep it true to the to the to the actual serpent. However, it is a dragonborn, so it will have legs and arms. I'm giving it a tail just to balance it out if I want this body type to work. I think that's pretty good. Normally, I would do maybe four or five different passes. I don't have enough time. So we're going to be going with that for your little silhouette, right? Your silhouette is what the character will look like without any details on the inside. Doing it as small as this is perfectly acceptable, right? Just to have that little idea for what you want up there. Difference between a Naga and a Lamia? I have no clue. Wondering for a character concept art portfolio, if you're doing a character sheet, for example, do I have to render the character each turnaround or only once? A turnaround sheet is different than a concept sheet. So that's actually what I was just going to explain um, while I'm drawing this out. Because now, usually when I design, I tend to go pretty quiet. Like, I designing is something that I don't tend to do in front of people just because it takes me a while. Um, 
and I like to like you know do this kind of thing on my own um, but while I'm drawing this because all that I'm doing right now is just taking inspiration oh dear all I'm doing right now is just taking inspiration from the um, body that I'm looking at and then just general dragonborn things and dragon anatomy that I'm gonna take inspiration from um, so there's really not much to explain in terms of that but what I'll explain right now is the difference between a concept sheet and a turnaround a turnaround is a reference sheet right it's a reference for the character and how you would draw it in multiple angles that one is usually kept pretty boring um, because it is a reference sheet for animators and for comic artists and stuff like that so they can draw the character over and over. It's a design guide. A concept sheet is just to show off what this character is going to look like, right? It is the, it is the initial concept for said character. So you will have probably a fully rendered version of the character on there, right? And then you will have... Sorry, I'm like trying to make this look okay. You'll probably have a fully rendered version of the character on there. And then you might have some expressions. And you might have some notes off to the side. Right? Explaining some things. Explaining some anatomy. You might have the character in a different position as well. You might have the character... Um... Like doing different things right off to the side. Right? It's... it's they're two different things. They are two different things. Like, a, a turnaround is different than a concept sheet. So this, like... I was just designing something with a little bit more Thai inspiration, so I'm actually going to take some of that again what happened I'm just explaining the diff I explained the difference between a concept sheet and a turnaround because they are two different things right now I'm just sketching it out so I'm not doing anything concrete just yet and just messing around when you're sketching you shouldn't take very long you want to take a very short amount of time really I kind of want to make a warrior just because that's kind of just what I'm in the mood for. Yeah, go for it. Go for it, Hyrule Slime. He got him big toes. The taller that the character is, the larger their base of, uh, the larger their base should be because of, um, you know, for... <gasps> Oh my gosh for for uh balance yeah that's the word i'm a really big fan of weird bendy spines like this Shop talents thank you you have a good birthday i did i did have a good birthday it was a nice time juicy penny count your day <laughs> How do you add such flow but detail in your sketch? Don't lift your pen. That tends to be my thing. It's like I tend to just kind of keep it moving. The more that you just kind of like not... Like the more careful you are, the more precious you are with your sketch, the less interesting it's going to be. So it's usually better just to keep the pen moving. I'm a very messy sketcher. Some people like to do like the single line thing. If I'm just keeping it at like the sketch only that I tend to sketch like this to keep it cleaner so the cleanup isn't doesn't take quite as long but because I'm going to be doing a couple passes of this I don't really care so I'm just moving on a little bit faster glad to hear thank you have a habit of chicken scratching ah don't do that I think the 
when you chicken scratch, when you do this, it tends to make everything look hairy and amateurish. Use bigger strokes. Try not to, when you go over your line again, make sure that it's the same line. Get better at getting stuff right on the first try. Which is easier said than done, but it's one of those things, you know? Line confidence, that's it. Kind of in the mood for these really big long claws. Why? Um, because I think they're cool. <laughs> I should actually make this tail longer if I want the balance to be better. Make it longer and a little bit bigger. As a computer artist, drawing line art without those weird crooked lines is so hard. I mean, this is digital. <laughs> What do you mean by weird crooked lines? That might just be your so your uh, your hardware if it's doing that to you. scribble when I sketch very lightly. I darken the line I like and the rest just fade away. Mm -hmm. That tends to be how a lot of- that's a very traditional technique. Is to like very lightly test with the pencil and then go in with everything else afterwards. I don't explain it but like when you draw a line it like isn't very smooth. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? Tips on how to deal with having so many ideas you get overwhelmed up and doing nothing. My partner has a really good piece of advice for this. How do you eat an elephant? That's right, one bite at a time. Pick one. <laughs> if you have so many ideas, don't try to do all of them at once. Pick one. Pick one and then write down the rest for later. Don't try to attempt them all at all, all at once. It's much easier if you- Because I have a bajillion ideas all at once all the time as well. But I'm like, I'm really used to having to tackle a, like little things at once. I have seven commissions that I have to do right now, right? Oh, actually six. I just finished one. Um, I have six commissions left on my list that I still have to do, right? I'm working at three at the same time right now. But then I also have my own personal things that I have to do, right? But my personal things, I have a lot of them that I want. And it's an expression, Sue. <laughs> like, there's a lot of things that I want to do on my own. But obviously, I can't do them all right now. So I write them down and I set them on the back burner for later. Tips for sketching coherently? Less is more. Don't try to add a bajillion lines all the time. It actually, like, like I said, don't, like, lift your, your pencil up a lot, right? It makes it look a lot easier, but, um, or it makes your lines a lot smoother, but also don't add too many lines. You notice how few strokes that was, right? Line confidence is important not only with your line art, but also with your sketching. <laughs> Gotta train those feet to draw. Get like four times as much done using both hands and feet. So true. Dang, this is what the elder that I designed should have looked like. <laughs> it would have been so intimidating if he looked like this. He was already intimidating. My DM did a good job, but like... Man, this would have been such a like a way cooler design. It would have been so like. I did this once, and apparently I can't do it again. So that's cool and epic and awesome. Can 
kind of want to do that one naga that I saw that was like like that instead. Yeah, that's cooler. That's a cooler silhouette. That full like yes. Usually end up turning sketches into basic line art, which kills my time because I end up blocking out colors on top and then draw the actual line art. Ah, the the way that I see people skip that is like they do the entire silhouette with just color first and then render on top by comparison. If you're doing line art, then I would just say to do the sketch and then another line for line art and then do the colors underneath. But like, I know that you're a renderer, uh, reimagined, so it's like, it might be better for you to do the silhouette with color only. Like, that might be faster in terms of, like, your work. I also love reptiles. I love reptiles. I want a snake. I want a pet snake. I should shrink this hat a little bit. Feels a little goofy right now. It's a little too big. Yeah. It's more intimidating when it's a bit smaller. <laughs> Do you play a bard, B? Oh, you have a snake, Savi? What kind? You do? M makes sense. <laughs> I'm a barbarian. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I love corn snakes. Corn snakes are so cute. What's their name? Oh, a snow morph. That's so nice. Those are so pretty. What a snake. I would love one. My rabbit might have some reservations. <laughs> that would <it> make sense. <laughs> I would very much like a ball python. I don't really care about the, the morph. I just would like a ball python. <laughs> Sneck? Their name is Sneck? That's incredible. <laughs> Grandmother owned a snake shop? That's really cool. I love angry shoelaces. Me too. Your sister named him? Makes sense. That's okay. I'd love to get a snake. My parents would never. That's a vibe. My mom has a deathly fear of worms, and thus she also is scared of uh, snakes by, by like, default. <laughs> I had a garter snake named Skeddy Noodle for a while, but he got sick. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I love beardies. Worms? Yeah. Like, you know, like, worms that are in the ground. Come out of the soil. Which is really funny, because she loves gardening. So I'm like, they're kind of unavoidable at that point. <laughs> yeah, this is all right. Now what I'm gonna look into now, um, because this is a very Thai, I pretty much have the base down, the base for this character down, because this is a very Thai inspired um, design, I really want to look up traditional Thai clothing, um, to kind of, haha, <laughs> tie it all together. Um, so I am going to look that up. Traditional Thai clothing. Oh, perfect. It knows. Oh, that's fun. What oh, a rational fear of grasshoppers. When I was younger... Like, really, really young. I used to, um... There was this thing that I did with a bunch of my friends. Um, we called it the Bug Hunters Club. And we would go out into the field in front of our school, like, during recess. And we would just catch bugs. The most popular thing that was there was grasshoppers. So we all got very familiar with just running around, catching a grasshopper in our hands, and putting it in a water bottle. We would release them afterwards, but we just really liked catching bugs. <laughs> Grasshoppers just so happen to be, like, part of that really big thing. Getting grasshopper ones. That sounds so fun. It was very fun. I remember one time we found a cicada and it was, like, the entire, like, playground. Like, all of our grade, like, gathered around it while a friend of mine, like, 
like took it in his hands and then put it in the water bottle and we just kind of we weren't like doing anything to it we were just observing it and the <laughs> the, the the like um cicada was just like screaming at us it was really funny he used to catch crickets in a haystack. I ended up sticking my hands in a fire ant's nest that was inside of one. No! That's terrible. I've never had to deal with fire ants. I'm glad you're, like, okay. <laughs> Do you have a fear of ants now? Or are you, like, are you, like, good? Cicadas are my worst fear. They scream? You never heard a cicada before? You know the noise? Hang on, I'm backing up for this. You know the noise? It's like, <clears throat> you know, that one? It's like you hear it outside during the summer. It's the worst thing ever. <laughs> But, like, it's also the best thing ever. I love the Japanese cicadas. Those ones sound great. <laughs> what is E? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Facial expressions. Thank you. I appreciate it. I did some really cool sketches last night, actually. Like, I had a... You want to know a fun fact about me? I grew up drawing dragons. Like, dragons are, like, my forte. Like, I love dragons. Um, so it's, like, like playing a dragonborn was just kind of, like, you know, it was fate for me, basically. <laughs> but I love dragons. So it's, like, I... Like, last night, I, I got to draw, like, a lot of the dragonborn that I designed. And, like, from doing this one doodle, I was, like... What do you call it? I was like, oh yeah, you could tell that I grew up during Dragon Dragons. <laughs> What's my favorite dragon? I'm a really big fan of like historical kind of mythological dragons. Like I love the European dragon. I love a good wyvern. I love a good, you know, whatever. But I am a really big fan of when it's more cultural. Like I love like the, like Asian dragons. Like the... Um, I love Aztec dragons. Like, that kind of thing, right? It's like, I love it when there's, like, the culture brought in. You get to see, like, the what each culture thought that a dragon would look like. And that's, like, my favorite thing ever. It's like, I love when they mix in their cultural aesthetic with the dragon itself, right? Quetzalcoatl was my life. Like, that feathered serpent. I had an obsession with that thing for a while. Love the artwork. Thank you. Amphitheater, yeah, that's the feathered serpent, right? It's, yeah, just a pair of wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I play Flight Rising? No, I do not. Chinese dragons with whiskers? Yeah, yeah, so Eastern dragons. The very classic Eastern dragon design. Also really big fan of that. I was really planning, there was one design I wanted to do. That I was like, I started it as an Eastern dragon. Hang on, I can grab it. It was, um, it was this one. You can kind of see where I started, like the shape of the face. Like, I wanted to make him... Like, an Easter dragon, I kind of started with it, and then, like, I tried to add, like, the, the fur, and, like, I didn't like it, because, like, one aspect of his design were these moose antlers, and it was, like, they had to be in there, so I was, like, all right, let me, let me see if I can work with this, but it ended up not working, so he became more of, like, a European dragon, which is, like, fine, but, like, I do wish that it had more inspiration behind it. I'm, like, I do like his design, but it's not my favorite. It's really cool. Thank you. Yeah, lung dragons are awesome. It was, uh, I think my favorite design was, um, oh, where is she? Callisto. Yeah. I like this one a lot. The, like, I really like what I did with the head and her silhouette's my favorite. It sucks that she'll never show up. Like, it sucks that she's, like, dead. But, like, my, <laughs> she is my favorite design. Um, she was really cool to work with. What kind of brush am I using? This one specifically is the, um, it's one of the Kyle brushes. It's a Vine Charcoal brush. Yeah, Vine Charcoal 1. Um, it's from the Kyle T. Webster brush pack um, that you can get with an Adobe plan. <laughs> but you can't... I don't know if he actually offers them for free outside of Adobe anymore. I know he has other brushes outside of Adobe that you can still get. But this one specifically, I don't think so. And unfortunately, because it is a paid... One, I cannot offer my brushes for, like, the brushes that I use for free. Hold on, White Dragon. I love how all the best designs end up being the one characters will never show up. Not really, right? <laughs> Working on some character designs for a shapeshifter. Any tips that might help between a human and non-human form? Um, we have past animal streams. 
um, what do you call it? We have past animal streams where I've talked about, like, the similarities between human and animal anatomy. So if you'd like to take a look at those, those I go into more depth about, um, the similarities and whatnot. Thank you, Joe. About the size of my hand? I think she's a- this one's probably about, like, seven feet tall. <laughs> I appreciate all the questions, and I appreciate you all trusting me enough to give you advice. If you'd like more of my advice, and if you'd like more of- um, me giving you, like, feedback. If you'd like proper feedback from me rather than me just giving you tips. We have summer camps coming up soon. I'll be teaching figure drawing and I'll also be teaching uh, comics and manga later in the um, school- Or later in the summer. Uh, that'll be in late July is when I will be teaching comics and manga. And then for the first two weeks of July, I'll be teaching all about figure drawing. So that'll be all anatomical. Um, and I'll be teaching some beginner and advanced principles for how to get better with your anatomy. Um, what is it? Exclamation point tensive? Something like that? <laughs> I don't know what the, the, the command is. I apologize. Um, or is it explanation more camps? It's one of the other one of those two. Um, but I will be teaching that, and then the comics and manga course that I'll be teaching later on. Um, I'll be teaching you how to create your very own comics and principles behind those. I was a comic artist for a while. I don't do it as often anymore, but I do still have those um, principles in the back of my brain. Um, so if you would like to check out the intensives and the summer camps that will be coming up this summer, exclamation point summer intensive. And check them out in canvas.com. You can check out the classes that will be offered during the summer. There are other camps, other intensive. I believe there's an animation intensive as well done by Josh. And there are just normal classes as well. What pronouns does dragon character use? You know, I wasn't, especially when I designed Dragonborn, I like to make them not look like one or the other. I like to make them like it could be either or. Like, it's like you look at this dragonborn and you're like, I don't know, it doesn't really, they don't really look like they have a gender. So you know what, let's say they then. Happy Pride. Crocodiles are really cool. I had to do a character design a long time ago. Um, where, like, he, he basically told me, hey, you're gonna, can I, can you design a dragon for me? It's gonna be like a red dragon. But, like, you can kind of go nuts with the design. I was like, you got it. Um, and then one of them was very crocodilian. And he said that that one was pretty much exactly what he wanted for this other dra green dragon that he wanted. But there was a different design that he went with for the red one instead. Um, which is totally fine. But I, I, I will always... Um, what do you call it? I will always say like take inspiration from the world around you if you want to make interesting designs look into culture look into other animals and especially if you're looking into dragons like i mean like it's it's cool to use lizards and stuff like that as references for dragons don't just do that take inspiration from other things some of my favorite designs of all time took inspiration from completely different animals that aren't even related to reptiles I do indeed know Ibis paint. Unfortunately, I'm not a big fan of it. But if you like Ibis paint, that is completely fine. Insect dragons. Yes. Yes. Insects are such a good source of inspiration. Like, I love insects. Insects are like a, like a gold mine. Insects in the ocean. Like, you have fish. It, it, was, it was a crime that I didn't do a dragonborn based off of a moray eel. Like, I went to an aquarium in Atlanta recently. And, like... Like, the, um, there was a tank that just had, like, four moray eels in it. And I was like, and I didn't use moray eels for my initial design. I was like, these are awesome. Like, why didn't I think of this? <laughs> use native animals for a lot of my characters? Yeah, that's fun.
Ant dragon. I saw somebody make a dragon based off of a crab once, and I think that design, like, it sounds funny, but that design was actually really cool. Like, it was really, really cool. I was a really big fan of it. Now, you can't see it again, but I am taking inspiration off to the side. So there's a lot of references off to the side that you guys can't see. Cicada dragon. I actually did a- I used a cicada for a character design that I did um, for my partner, one of his uh, characters. Um, it was- he's a- his name is Hush. Hush is a sorcerer rogue. Um, <clears throat> a sorcerer rogue- oh no. What are they called? Oh my fellow d and nerds. The angel ones. The angel kind of characters. They, I know they nerfed them, but they used to be, like, super popular. Azamar, thank you! Yeah, it's an Azamar. He's a, he's a sorcerer rogue Azamar. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hush was really fun to design. I, I ended up, a lot of my friends helped me design him. <laughs> no, Aarakocra is a, uh, my best friend plays an Aarakocra. Um, but, no, the... That Azamar was really fun to design. I took a lot of buggy inspiration. Um, he like glows when he uses his magic. It's it's really fun. It's a really fun design. Arcane Trickster or multi-class? He was a multi-class. Um, I don't know which rogue exactly. I know that he was a shadow sorcerer. I think. Oh, he was a he was a. A soul knife rogue. Soul knife rogue shadow sorcerer. I think that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I asked him. I remember when we were, we were designing him, he was like... I was like, what? I was like, what motifs do you have for this character? Because he gave me nothing. He was just like, a uh, little kid white hair. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, alright, you gotta give me something else. <laughs> and I'm like, you can't just, you can't just give me that. And he was like, um... Uh, and I'm like, give me a motif. Give me, give me something I can work with. And he was like, um, eyes? And I'm like, I can work with that. Um, and then he kind of gave me his general outfit. And I was like, okay. I'm like, what if we kind of took eyes and we worked with something like the eyes that are imprinted on the back of moth wings? Right? Because he's an Azamar. So I'm like, I gotta have to bring wings into there somehow. Right? So I was like, why don't we just take inspiration for more buggy wings? Because of the eye. Like... I could have gone the obvious route, right? I could have gone Seraphim. I'm like, yeah, I could have taken inspiration from actual angels, but that's boring, right? Everybody's gonna do that. So let's just keep working with that, right? So I'm like, what else do I think of when I think of eyes with wings and that kind of angel thing? I'm like, moths, moths, butterflies, that kind of thing. And I was like, all right, let's work with that, right? It's good to have multiple sources of inspiration. It's good to have multiple ideas and just keep on... Keep on letting the wheels turn. Keep on letting them move, you know? This silhouette rocks, by the way. I'm, like, working on this. I haven't actually talked about the actual design that I'm working on. I work better in silence, but I have to talk, right? It's a stream. Um, but I am... I'm loving this so far. I hope you guys are actually liking this, too. This is a really cool design so far. I might actually just take this. Like, this just might be a character that I keep at some point. I don't know if I'll ever play another Dragonborn, because I'm like, I like to mix up the characters that I play, but like, this is, this is really cool. I'm liking this a lot. Thank you. I've seen a Vulture Dragon. There is one Vulture that I keep on taking inspiration from. Some people call it the Bone-Eating Vulture. It's the Bearded Vulture. Um... <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Um, and, like, that- It's just a dragon in real life. If you look up a bearded bearded vulture, it's just a dragon. Like, that is an IRL dragon. Because it's huge, too. Um, yeah, let me, let me look it up. I'll just show you guys. Bearded vulture. This thing is a dragon. Like, this thing is a dragon. Look at how cool this bird is, dude. This is nuts! It's awesome! Like, this is an actual picture of it, right? This is just a dragon in real life. 
Like, this bird is crazy. And I'm like, I love it's those eyes, right? Um, I love taking inspiration from this bird. It's so pretty. I love this bird. But yeah, it's known for uh, for just eating bones. That's why some people say that it's like the bone-eating vulture as well. Yeah, it's so beautiful. Shoe bills are pretty cool too. I do like shoe bills. Um, okay. Let's keep working on this. So I am finishing up this right now. I'm going to give it just kind of a sketch outline. Once I get past the face, the rest of the body shouldn't be too hard. Uh, because the face is very heavily detailed. Um, and then I'm just going to give him... I'm going to give him a... Um, oh, what do you call it? I'm just going to give him flat colors because I will not have time to render this. Absolutely not. So we will just be working with flats this time around. Because a concept sheet takes a lot. Um, let me actually show you a concept sheet. Let me, let me show you one. Just so that you have it in mind. And I can show you... Like what I mean when I say character concept sheet. You guys saw them at the on the thumbnail. This is Strider. This is my centaur character um, who's based off of an ibex rather than a horse. Um, a character concept sheet is meant to show off the character. It's not necessarily meant to show a turnaround. It's to show you what this character looks like in a lot of different angles, right? So it's like you have the main art of the character. It could be a posed position. It doesn't have to be like anatomical it doesn't have to be like just an a pose it can be a dynamic pose right so they can be moving i showed a side view of strider their name is strider um so i showed a side view as well to show that their profile looks a little funky just to match with goats a little bit more um the initial sketch the body without any clothing on it um some expressions right different poses give you an idea of the character's personality Right, so not just <clears throat> not just the pose here, like this gives you an idea like of the energy of the character. Um, and then this gives you the height. So Strider at the top of their hair is five foot three, five foot eleven at the edge of the horns, and then standing at their um, hind legs, they are eight foot four at the edge of their antlers. Right? So this is another character. Um, I was playing in a one shot, so I was like, okay, so this is the main character of the one shot, so I was like, well, um, you know, to compare to that one. Um, who is seven foot three. He's a Goliath. Um, so, you know, a character concept sheet is meant to kind of show off the character and give you ideas about who they are, right? And like how they operate. Let me give you another example of a creature. This is a design that I did for my best friend. This is a bit of an amateurish one. It's not great. I would have laid it out differently. Um, but, you know, it's their Eidolon, or their Eidolon, right? So they have wings that cover the mouth, right? So I have different positions of the mouth, one with the mouth open, one with it closed. And this is without the wing that covers the mouth. And then this one is with the wing that covers the mouth, right? Mouth is closed here so that the wing covers the teeth up, right? That is what their actual design is for. This one is the wing that's kind of off to the side while the mouth is open. So you already have that one. So you have the three extras off to the side. And then this is what the head looks like from the front, right? Gives you different angles. It's not a turnaround, but it gives you more information without doing too much more, right? And then a top-down view right with notes these notes are just there to kind of give you an idea of this um creature this was a design where my best friend just told me hey go nuts <laughs> i want large front paws it's going to be quadrupedal and it's a celestial so just go nuts with that go however you want with that um this is the time when i heard celestial i'm like let's go with the kind of biblically accurate angel kind of thing that's pretty fun um i brought in antlers as well um but i was like how many wings can i add on to this thing <laughs> right the tail is two functional wings there's more wings that go in the middle of the body right if it's going to be covering up part of the design, you can just do this with an X and like, oh, that's where a joint is. Okay, sounds good. That's where the biggest wings are. So these two right here. Two functional neck wings, wings on the front of the face. And then the ears also function as wings. So you kind of just have wings everywhere. I just went nuts <laughs> with that. Um, and then these are like fire. It's like flames. So they do like move on their own. Um... <clears throat> But right, this is kind of what a concept sheet is. Rather than you having a turnaround, you just have information about the character and you have information about 
um, the creature that you are designing, right? The number one thing that I hate seeing on a concept sheet is too much text. Too much text, right? Do you see how little amounts of text there are on here? There's so a very little amount of text. I don't want to hear your character's backstory. I don't want to hear the information about why the, this operates the way it does. I don't want to hear blah, 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 right? I just want the base information. I want you to tell me how things work and how it's going to function, right? Don't tell me the why. Tell me the what. Tell me the what and the how, and that's it, right? Tell me the what, how, and the where, <laughs> right? Where things go, how they work, what it looks like without stuff. Don't tell me why. I don't want to know why these wings are functional. I don't know why. I don't want, I don't need to know why all that it makes everything look cluttered, right? Also handwrite it. It looks a lot better if you handwrite it. It's like, it's so much better looking. Um, here, let me show you other concepts for this Eidolon. There were different ones that I did, right? So for this one specifically, right, this one was a very mechanical looking one. This was my initial idea. I decided to go with an astrolabe as my idea for Celestial. Um, so it was like their entire body. This was like the core of a nebula and then the rest of it was just like all these moving parts within the body were just nebula. It's a nebula, right? And then everything else is very bronze, right? So this just tells you the nebula moves throughout the body and keeps the parts intact, excretes nebula through head and tail, moves like an incense backflow burner, right? It just tells you what it does. It's very functional. It's very, this is what it is, this is what it does, that's it, right? And this tells you this is what this looks like, right? It's aiming over here. Ever-changing eye and horns, pupil, or iris, quote-unquote, is, moves like a lava lamp. So this section is just one big pupil, right? The eyes are ever-changing and ever-moving. Um, and then this tells you how the arms move, right? The nebula flows back like a cycle. Um, so it goes in and out like this, and it connects to this extra wire here. The mechanism releases to, for a new nebula flow right here, right? And it opens and it can be adjusted, right? It just... Te it just tells you, right? Same thing with over here. I really like this concept. I'm probably going to use it again. Um, this was a very alien kind of idea. Celestial, I'm like, yeah, what else is in Celestial? Aliens. <laughs> so I kind of made this weird silhouette. Um, again, what the head looks like from the front. This is this big kind of lobster claw on the front. And what it does is it folds inwards, locks into the armpit, and unfurls. And that's where its wings come from. Right? So it's like, there's a lot of different things. There's this one as well. This was, we mixed these two. So we got the head from this one, the body from this one. Um, but this one, its wings were this rib cage that would open up and it would swim around like a, like an invertebrate uh, in the sky. Right? So that's my explanation of how character design sheets work. Like it's very character concept sheets work it's the concept i don't need the the story right a layout a lay, your layout depends on what it is you're trying to achieve and especially with concept work um like if it's a concept that you're gonna pitch to somebody you want the what they don't care about who is doing what right if you have something if you want it to be more stylized you want it to look like a journal then make it look like a journal entry right you don't want to make it look like a fifth graders like project right that you didn't ms paint right you want to make it look mature you want to make that layout look interesting your principles of design come into play very very frequently right being an artist right being an illustrator means that you need to learn how to be a lot of different artists at once right getting into graphic design and kind of understanding how layouts work is really really important actually it, it helps a lot with making your work look more professional and more interesting You have any tips on drawing baby animals? Uh, not really. Study, I guess. <laughs> I kind of just like, if I need to draw a baby animal, I look it up. But yeah, that's that's my that's my little explanation because I don't know how much of that I'm going to be able to do for this character because those concept sheets took me hours. So, and we only have about an hour left, so I'm kind of moving as fast as I can. <laughs> I'm glad, Gregory. I'm glad it helps. And again, if you're not too sure about your character concept pages, if you're not too sure about your illustrations and stuff like that, if you want live feedback from me, if you want proper feedback from me, we have camps coming up. Camps and classes coming up for the summer, if you'd like to sign up for those, exclamation point summer intensives. 
and there's also exclamation point classes if you'd like to see the things that we also offer you can check our calendar for what is actually coming up during the summer i'll be teaching figure drawing and comics and manga so i'll be telling you my process throughout both of those they are two week intensives so it is more beneficial for you to go to both weeks but there is the option for one or the other as well same thing with figure drawing figure drawing is an anatomy class so it is just to get better at your basics college around august good news gregory i teach it in july <laughs> I teach one set of figure drawing in August and one set of figure drawing in July and the comics and manga class is also in July. So the comics and manga one is later in July. Um, ooh, when is it? It's from, I, I know it if I look at the calendar. It's from the 17th to the 28th is comics and manga. From the 3rd to the 14th is figure drawing. So that's with me. Any favorite kaiju or dragon designs? Off the top of my head, no, not really. I just kind of like looking at designs and going, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Don't mind me as I continually look at more references off to the side. Would you join summer camp? Would you join online calls? Where would you teach? Oh, uh, so the summer camps. Oh, I totally forgot to mention that. All summer camps are online, so they are online taught. You are able to talk to me directly um, because it is within a uh, Google Classroom setting. So you are able to speak with me. You are able to ask for feedback. You are able to. It is completely personalized feedback, and you are able to directly talk to me. So. It is a, an online class, so no matter where in the world you are, just convert the time and see if you're able to make it. There is also a recorded only option, so if you would like to just be sent a recording of the class, that is also an option, I believe. Um, obviously, it's more beneficial to join like in, like like while it's going on, but there is a recorded option just in case the time do zone doesn't work for you. Is it paid? Yes. Is it minimum age for the classes? No. Oh, well, yes. Minimum, yes. But <laughs> intensives tend to be... Like, I never usually get anybody under the age of 13. Um, when we do the other classes, there is a minimum age of, like, six. But those are for, like, the really young kid classes. Um, for my classes specifically, I tend to teach teenagers and up. Um, so it's, it's a pretty wide range of ages. So what a dragonborn is this? I was taking inspiration from the Tai Naga, which is a mythological creature. Just for fun. I was like, I want to I want to take inspiration from this thing. I need to hydrate. My throat's starting to hurt. It's really interesting. I'll check it out. Of course. Thank you. Pixel art? I don't even know what that is. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know what pixel art is. P-I-X-E-L. I, I admire pixel artists so much. That that patience is insane. Like, I'm just like, I, I'm too impatient. Every time that I try to do pixel art, I'm way too impatient for it. So I never do it. <laughs> but I love pixel artists. I'm like, you guys are so, like, cool. Every once in a while, I get the urge to learn how to do pixel art again, and then I try, and then I'm like, never mind. <laughs> I'm like, this is gonna take too long. It's a website where you draw pixel art. Oh, okay. Yes, I've heard of Krita. I don't really like Krita. I hate pixel art. Then why? Then why are you saying that it's a shame that nobody on YouTube uses it? What's the point? <laughs> you should be happy that <laughs> that nobody uses it if you hate pixel art. What do I think of Fire Alpaca? I think it's alright. 
it's a little too basic. Here's the thing, right, is especially when you become an artist who uses a paid program, right, Procreate users, CSP users, Photoshop users, right, we tend to, like, I they tend to be snobs. <laughs> All of us are, right? I don't know a single CSP user who doesn't recommend CSP to everybody, right? Because it's a really good program, right? It is a really good program. I use Clip Studio as well as Photoshop. Um... And it's, and CSP is like a really, really good program. I use Photoshop, obviously. <laughs> um, I like both. Personally, there are just a few like quality of life things that I like more about Photoshop, but like that's just personal opinion. Um, I love using both. Like if I know that uh, CSP is better at one thing, I'll switch to CSP. Or if like I know that Photoshop is one better at another thing, I switch to Photoshop. Um, but it's either or, right? Truly, I can never go back to a free program. Yeah, it's... But here's the thing that I've learned about Krita users as well, is, like, when you start with Krita, it's hard to change. Because it's... a Krita is very much a program that is very proprietary. So it's really hard to, to get out of it. Which is totally fine, like, if you're just gonna use Krita. But they'll never let you use Krita in most professional settings. I actually learned that some shots in uh, the new Spider-Verse um were done in Krita, which is pretty cool i'm like wow it's like they did some of the painting in Krita, um but a lot of it is like especially with animators a lot of it is like tomb boob or maya or stuff like that right um a lot of digital illustrators it's a uh, photoshop right csp is even very rarely used professionally um but they are very very close in operation so it's like if you know one you know the other CSP has a lot of, um, sales for those of y'all who are like, I'm too broke. I got my CSP for $20. <laughs> CSP goes on a lot of sales. That has 60% off sale recently. Just watch out for sales. <clears throat> $20 too expensive for you? Down the right brushes, Krita will do everything. I guess. Like, I guess you could say that, like, with, with the right brushes. But it's, like, it, 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 again, like, I'll say, like, it's the, it's not the program, it's the artist. I just personally don't like the learning curve that Krita has. So I'm, like, I started using it, and I'm, like, I hate this. <laughs> um, sorry, the illustration didn't disappear. I turned off the layer. It's still here. <laughs> but... Yeah, it's, it's to each their own, right? If you like Krita, that's totally fine. Like, if you can operate totally fine in Krita, that's, like, that's 100% okay. <clears throat> For an app, you'll never, you'll never like to, you wouldn't like to hear how much Photoshop is then. Is it CSP a monthly subscription? Not, m well, yes. If you're on an iPad, yes, it's a monthly subscription. If you are on a PC, um, it's a, you get to pay for updates, which is like a strange um, thing that they implemented. But, you know, it, it's every big, um, every really big um, program eventually gets with that. Photoshop is more costly. I pay almost $200 a year for Photoshop. That's what it takes to become a professional artist. I'm just letting you know that. Like, that's just... Yeah. Welcome to being an adult. <laughs> and then when you become an adult, you don't call them apps anymore. You call them software. Yeah, what's your drawing software? <laughs> Yeah, to almost 200 CAD for, for Photoshop a year. Yeah. Are you going to use Flip a Clip? I have not. I'm not an animator. Nope, I'll just continue drawing on paper. I know some traditional artists that spend over $1,000 on their, on their materials every year. Really, in the long run, digital art is cheaper than traditional art. Like, if you, if you work with a lot of traditional pieces... Like, I love traditional work as well. But working with traditional stuff, it's like you constantly have to replace stuff. You constantly have to get new things. And if you want, like, better... 
material, it's going to cost you. Right? You start off with the cheap stuff, 100%. That's what you do with digital as well, but then it's like you get... Um, you get more expensive as time goes on. With digital, though, you can just keep on doing the free stuff if you decide to stay a hobbyist, right? Who said that you have to do art professionally, right? So it's like, if you just want to stay as a hobbyist and you never have to spend money on, like, digital art ever, then that's totally fine as well. Like, the only thing you need to spend money on is the iPad or the computer itself, and chances are you probably already have that. It's been a lot of traditional art, yeah. PCR iPad. I have a gaming PC. Exclamation point Jesse device. You can see what I use. Or device Jesse. It's one or the other. Device Jesse or yeah, yeah, device Jesse. There it is. <laughs> and it'll give you everything. any problems with bugs and crashes and stuff with Photoshop? I've heard a lot of negative stuff about Adobe programs, specifically Photoshop. Here's the thing, right? Is that whenever, like, a bug happens with Photoshop, I'm like, alright, I'll just go back to a previous version, and then the bug is gone. It actually doesn't happen that much for me. It's like, crashes and things like that, like, happen about as frequently with Photoshop as they do with CSP for me. Like, it's there. They both crash every once in a while. Every program crashes every once in a while, especially if you work with really big files. Um, Photoshop does have some bugs sometimes. It's kind of annoying. Um, like, for me, they're... If it's so, like, intense that I have to, like... Uh, you know, change out what version of the software I'm using, then it's kind of annoying for it, like... Like, for me, it's actually not that bad. Like, CSP crashes sometimes. Photoshop crashes sometimes. It's just the nature of software. I am using Photoshop. How do I find good brushes on Clip Studio? I think that it's a good general thing. It's like I find all of my brushes from other artists. So like go on social media and you'll find like artists and some of them offer their brushes up for free. Some of them are paid but it's like the payment isn't even that crazy so it's like whatever. I'm expecting that today. Hi Kay! That's my DM. How are you? I was upset that I didn't have a Naga Dragonborn, so I decided to do it. <laughs> I just got tricked into intending my friend's at-home wedding before D&D. Oh! Sorry, I just read that message. That's... Nuts. Why the... <laughs> That's such a strange thing to get tricked into. <laughs> Are you gonna go? Like, I guess you don't have to. Yeah, my stuff crashes because I tend to work with really large files. This file right now, it's like... Actually, this one's not that big. I think I sized it down. Yeah, 5k by 3k? That's smaller. Compared to the file size I tend to work with. Um, usually minimum I work with 4,000 pixels. So I'm like, 3,000 by 5,000? That's pretty small. Oh, like it just happened. They just got married. Oh. That's... That's weird. <laughs> that's... I see. Congrats to them. Hope you're doing well. small I can bear with a thousand pixels on my laptop yeah no I use a gaming PC it's pretty like this one's older so it's not as strong as it used to be but because I'm using a gaming PC it's very strong for illustration because <laughs> my graphics card is pretty good too um so it's like it, it can handle a lot um but if I'm working with multiple of those files at once which I tend to do like that tends to make my program go a little bit slower 
it would probably it like it would do that on most pro programs though. Like that that's something that a lot of programs can't handle. People ever simp over my I would hope not. <laughs> I would very much hope not. <laughs> Corn is eight. <laughs> I'd be real weird. Out of my dad's PC, I use it for art. It's a gaming laptop. Ah, that's vibes. I use Pro. I use CSP Pro. I don't get. I don't have EX. EX too expensive. <laughs> that one's too expensive. I remember seeing that one on sale, and I'm like, ah, oh, no, it's okay. Because I'm definitely not going to be using CSP as much as I use Photoshop. So I'm like, I'll just pay for Pro because I don't need EX. Because I'm not an animator. Still need a digital. Oh, where did I? Sorry, I was rubbing my eyes and suddenly it's gone. Um, still need digital art, but I like it. Thank you. Being new to digital art just means that you will be advanced in the future. CSP go on sale for a hundred. That's the EX version, isn't it? Like it's like you can get it for like forty bucks if it's on sale, depending on how good the sale is. Especially with the Christmas sale. I know that the Christmas sale is like you got like fifty percent off or something, which is really good. How do you draw humans? You can learn more about that during the summer intensives camp that we are teaching soon where i teach about figure drawing and you can learn all about human anatomy yes exactly Sixty percent off right now. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. I was like, I remember seeing that on my uh, on Instagram. I was like, oh, CSP is sixty percent off. It's like I already have it, but <laughs> that's great. I should have used a different brush. This one's taking me a while. The pencil. I know I wanted it to be a bit quicker, so I don't know why I picked this brush. <laughs> yeah. Summer intensives are great for if you want to improve your art skills or create pieces for a portfolio. Yes, so they are advertised as a portfolio class. If you're looking into improving your portfolio or just improving your skills a lot, the figure drawing courses are like super intense. So if you wanted to sign up for those, those are really, really good. I didn't write that curriculum, but it is a good one. Um, and then there's other things that you can do for your portfolio just to do your skills. Like again, like the comics one that I will be teaching. That one is very much for comic art and layout design. I will be talking about layouts a lot. That's really important. Speech bubble placement, things like that. That's a, that's a curriculum I wrote. <laughs> <laughs> the, the speech bubble placement day is my favorite one. I like to do that one. That one's pretty fun. Um, I also like to teach about, like, cinematography within um, comic art because that's really important. So. I'm drawing so far. Thank you. Question should you make a character concept sheet first? The turnaround, especially if you've already been drawing the character for a while. The concept sheet. Concept sheet is 100% the first one that you do. Gives you an idea of the character. And then the turnaround should be after.
comics obviously is something I should learn to do. I've only made them once or twice. Comics are so fun to do. I've been doing them since I was a kid, and it's like, it's just, they're just so fun. <laughs> like, I've learned that I can't animate. Like, I've learned that. Thank you for the $10 dono, Sue. <laughs> Appreciate it. I'll probably have to forget to donate later. I appreciate it. You have no obligation to. It's very kind of you. Um, yeah, no. Comics are, like, just so fun to work on. Like, I'm not an animator, so it's, like, it's a... It's, like, the, the still version of storytelling. <laughs> you know what I mean? The still version of story of uh, visual storytelling. Just want to. I know. Appreciate it nonetheless. Even if you forgot your constant patronage to the um as a Wayne Canvas member, <laughs> and I think you're also a Patreon member, um, and just always being in the stream, your support is enough. Even if you forgot to donate that would be completely okay hi evie gone for a while back while i eat before i had before i had to work this is my work i'm working right now <laughs> have usually starting off shapes like squares rectangles certain center of humor good starter I'm having a reference is also useful once you become more advanced with drawing people you learn that the rectangles and stuff are actually not that helpful like it's like once you get more advanced with things but especially if you're starting out yeah start with the shapes and then get into forms and then learn about the skeleton and then realize that drawing those forms were bad and you shouldn't draw the skeleton first and stuff or similar shapes to the skeleton it's just one of those things that you start with and then once you kind of have that down then you realize what the better techniques are it's similar to color like, you realize that everything that school taught you was wrong, and you're like, oh, shoot, I have to unlearn that now. What do you mean that orange isn't the complementary of blue? So on and so forth. It's not? No. Let me show you something fun. We are working digitally. Right now. Let's take a look at this wheel. When you are working with the color wheel, right, your complement is the one that is directly across from you on the wheel. What's the blue across from on this wheel? That's yellow, my friends. Especially if we are working digitally, your complementary colors are no longer the same. Red is the opposite of cyan. Green is your complementary of magenta. This kind of sky blue is your orange complementary. Yes, exactly. There you go. It depends on what color wheel you're working with, right? This is your RGB color wheel. There are a bunch of different color wheels. The RYB color wheel is actually out of date. The one that you're going to be working with traditionally usually is your CMY color wheel. That's your contemporary artist's wheel. Um, where cyan, magenta, and yellow are your um, primary colors. Because red is actually mixable. If you mix yellow with magenta, you get red. So the primary colors that you can't mix by using anything else are magenta, yellow, and cyan. Um, so those three are your traditional colors if you are working more in a more contemporary way. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot. Like, I don't want to go over all of it. This is just too much, but it's, it's a whole thing. <laughs> Yourself the hero is great for your self-esteem. Joy, you're speaking my language. That self-insert when you're younger, yo, my favorite thing. I love talking about my old cringe art. I had a my self-insert when I was a kid was named Winter. And she was a snow princess. She was a snow dragon princess. It, it was so edgy. It was so much. It was so funny. I like I look back on it and I'm like, oh, I was really a kid. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was the best. It was it was the best. I I loved it. Like, I'm looking back on it now, I'm like, oh, it's so cringe, but, like, it's it's the best. <laughs> a 
RGB is the system of our eyes, it's the system of light. RGB is like what you do for light. So like CMY, you can also use digitally, um, but people tend to, from what I've seen, tend people tend to use stick to printers. CMY is also, you can also use CMY traditionally. You call it the contemporary painter's palette. You can use CMY traditionally, I was told to. <laughs> In university, they were like, sure has to be, it makes your colors look better. Um, RYB is pretty outdated at this point. A lot of designers don't use it anymore. What boy didn't want to be Captain Kirk? That's vibes. I wanted to be a dragon. <laughs> Um, how many tips for coming up with a story and details for the character? I love drawing the character, but never think of a backstory or personality. Um, I don't know, really. It just kind of comes to me when I <laughs> when I come up with a with a character. It's like I come up with the design and then I write. You don't have to have a backstory. Who says you're gonna be the writer when you grow up? Or maybe you are grown up. Who says you have to be a writer? Maybe you can just create for the sake of creating. Nobody says you have to write a backstory. I'm just trying to get this. Cleared up a little bit faster. I may actually not be able to get to colors. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm so I'm like, I'll be able to get to colors. As it turns out, I cannot get to colors. So I might just do the lines and then do a gray inside and then just have the stuff off to the side to give you guys kind of an idea of this concept sheet. So what I'm gonna do, right, the things that need some explaining um, are what the mouth looks like when it opens. Um, and heights, height differences and stuff like that. So that is probably what I'm going to detail when I draw this one. Will I name them? That's a good question. I don't actually know. Swing Fam has never done a part two to a stream? Nope. <laughs> nope. It's always just been one thing. One big thing. We've done two part classes. Done lots of two-part classes. I just did an Art Nouveau two-parter. That was fun. Y'all want to see the demo for that? I drew Zelda. <laughs> we have done a monster stream. We tend to do those around Halloween. Chunky milk. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We did do a two-parter with Josh. That's correct. That's my bad, Joe. <laughs> it wasn't my stream, that's why I don't remember. <laughs> um, don't finish a character on stream, do you end up finishing it off stream or just leave it? I tend to just leave it, usually. Um, I come up with a solution to make it go by faster. Um, where is it? Where was my last demo that I did? Wing canvas, there you are. Digital demos, 2023, spring 2023, and it was digital art. Yeah! I did a Zelda piece a little bit ago. I think it could have been better. I'm like, I don't really like the background, so I might just redo it for myself. Like, not for the class itself, but like... I do like the way that I rendered her face. Like, I think that I like the way that I did this, but like, the rest of it's kind of... Eh. I'm like, I don't love it. But this is a fun one. The demo that I did for class. Digital art happening on Saturdays. I don't teach it anymore, like, for the rest of the term, but it will be taught if you'd like to check out the digital art classes that we offer as well. Those ones are a little bit more relaxed, so it, you don't need to have an art boot camp for it, but it will still help you improve. Exclamation point classes. I love Zelda. I also love Zelda. Are you going for the animation? Nice. Are you going for animation? <laughs> advertising to all my friends. Thank you. We appreciate it. Hoping to apply for character design. How am 
many of you guys actually want to be professional character designers? How many of y'all in chat right now? Like, if you just, if you told me, it's like, how many of you want to be professional character designers? I respect the animators so much, me too. I'm like, I, I can't. My best friend's an animator. I could never. I'd love to. Me. <laughs> love to do it. I do. Alright, I figured. Let me tell you all, character design is the toughest art profession to get into. <laughs> it is a very, very tight market. It is one of the ones that are really, really tough to get into. Does that mean that you can't do it? Of course not. Um, it just means that you're gonna have to work extra hard if you want to be a professional character designer. Um... It is up there as one of the toughest. Like, it's because it's with concept artists, right? And concept art is one of the toughest um, career paths to go down. Um, it is difficult to be a, char a character artist. Like, when you're a junior artist, you better have the skills of a senior. It is, it is difficult. That doesn't mean that it's impossible. It just means that it is difficult. It's like, you better hope you're phenomenal if you want to get into character, like character art and make sure that if you're go trying to get into character art don't just look for character art look for character concept art if you're an illustrator character art doesn't necessarily mean that you are designing the characters you're probably just going to be the person that works with them so looking at character art is different than character concept art because character concept art you're not the one that's or character concept art, you're the one that's designing it. Character art, you're the one that's just drawing the characters. You're not the one who actually illustrated it. Or you're not actually the one who's going to design it. Why is it so difficult? Because the, ma the market is very saturated. Everybody wants to be a character designer, right? It's super difficult because everybody's applying for it. So it's a market. There are so many character designers and not enough positions. That's why if you're going to go into game art, a lot of people have, like, game art or animation, a lot of people start off as cleanup artists. Cleanup artists are riggers. If you are a person who is able to add the bones to a 3D model or to an illustration, people want you. Because that's a, that's a job that nobody wants. So it's like, if you get in through that, like, you are almost guaranteed a job if you can do that. Because it's, it is a tough field to do like it's not a tough field to get into it's a tough field to do like it is it is rough to actually rig something like rigging a model is so difficult like i've done it a couple times but it's not easy so it's like being a, like a like a rigger for like games or for an animation studio is like it's not too difficult to get the job it's difficult to know how to do it same thing with like uving and stuff nobody wants to uv Yeah, very technical in 3D animation. It's it's very it's a lot. <laughs> That's why I'm not an animator cuz I don't really like the technical side of art. So I'm like I much prefer technical in terms of like like doing like bug fixing and like UVing and rigging and stuff like that. I hate that stuff. So I'm like I just want to draw my funny little pictures, which is why I am a freelance <laughs> illustrator and a and a teacher, right? I do commissions, uh, freelance for both public and um, small companies. Both publicly and for small companies. There we go. That's English. I think those lines are pretty closed, right? Ooh, whoops. I had contiguous unchecked. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, the feet are open. What's open on here? Okay, there we go. There's big gaps. Fantastic. Okay, so I'm just gonna fill this one with gray. If I have the chance, I might color it, but I don't think I will. Uh, what if I expand? Let's go by one this time, just to be safe. Inverse that. And we'll just fill it in with a neutral gray. Always name your layers. I don't care who you are, name your layers.
What's UVs? A UV is like if you've ever looked at like a 3D model in like a video game, you know how like, you know what textures are, right? It's what makes the thing look like something else, right? <laughs> it's what makes that gray block actually look like a brick wall, right? So if you are UVing, UVing is just the thing that makes sure that those textures look correct, right? So if you look at that brick here, this is the way that I explain it. If think of a cube. Right? Think of like a cube. Think of it as if like it's a Rubik's cube. And each side has these little squares on it. Right? If you were to stretch this cube out. Right? If I was to stretch this, right? And make it taller. Whoopsies. If I was to make this taller. And stretch it out like this you see how the squares on each side get warped right like they get like pulled so they're no longer squares you as the uv artist your job is to make sure that those squares stay as squares right so i would have to realign the uvs so that they are squares again you have to push and pull the texture. You got to move it around and make sure that it's like that. Now imagine doing that on something rounded. And then imagine doing that on a person. Now you understand why it sucks. <laughs> right? UVing is awful. UVing is awful. It's the worst. I hate UVing. I knew somebody who knew how to U who loved UVing. I was like, you're nuts. You're crazy. <laughs> it's such a pain. It is such a pain. Nobody likes UVing. Yeah. Here's the thing, Misty, is that it's actually not hard. It's just time-consuming. Like, so time-consuming. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show what the head looks like when its mouth is opened. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to copy it again. And I want to make sure that the layout is nice, right? I want to make sure that this layout is nice. I want the heads to be able to stack like this. That there's one above the other so that there's a nice easy comparison for the two actually i don't even need two because there's already the one there so i want them to stack i want to make sure that this layout is nice and it's nice to look at right so i'm gonna have one head i'm gonna have them align like this yeah that'll probably be nicer if i'm gonna have them align like this right so the head is in like a row right next to each other Oh, scoots. <laughs> yeah, it's super tedious. It's it's super annoying. Yeah, you have to keep the texture the same size and consistency on every part of the surface. And don't even get me started on the fact that you have to make sure that the texture doesn't, like... Like it has a nice seam line. Horrific! You gotta make sure that the seams actually look nice, too. dreadful it was dreadful can you tell that i used to be in game art <laughs> you notice what i did is that i moved the anchor to the back of the jaw that's the correct placement for where your jaw would actually open because it's your lower jaw that opens not your upper one. Oh, i should have you know what i should have done actually whoops get rid of this because that's probably not going to change that much i want this to move though so let's put this back here actually in here it should be here yeah move this down open there yeah there we go and then i can just erase this since not necessarily part of that there we go seams on clothes no 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 seams within the texture so it's just to make sure that like the texture looks realistic right 
Have you ever seen it when, like, you look at a wood texture? Like, it's not, like, real wood. It's, like, vinyl or something. And the two sections of that wood don't connect perfectly. Like, it's not like they're two planks, right? But it's, like, you have, like, it's super dissatisfying. Like, say if you have a counter that's, like, vinyl. And one side looks like this, right? And it's, like, all great. Right? And the other side is also that same wood, but it starts like this. And it's like... But this is the same table, right? And it's one block, and you're like, ugh, that looks ugly. Right? It's that. You gotta make sure that, that seam line doesn't exist. The way that I love the thought of 3D rigging and animation through reels of gravity and movement. No, no, no! The thought of it is amazing. The thought of it is beautiful. Actually doing it sucks. Paint... Weight painting? Awful. I've never done it, but all my friends complain. They're like, I hate weight painting. <laughs> They're like, it's the worst thing ever. I hate doing it. It's tedious, and it makes no sense. I wanted to give these kind of rounded um, teeth, just because I think that that's pretty fun. Weight painting is to make sure that everything falls correctly. It's the thing that makes sure that everything's weight is correct. Right? So it makes sure that your arm, that the arm of a 3D model doesn't bend wrong. Or that, like, the clothing bends correctly. Or, like, it, it's just to make sure that everything has the correct movement. Pretty much. Oh, you love doing it? Oh, you're weird then. No, I'm sorry. That, that's strange. <laughs> I'm half memeing. Topology sucks and yes, weight painting is awful. Over the mesh is dense. Yeah, topology is... But I have a friend who loves topology. I've never actually done it that either. I'm like, I can't be bothered. character sheet right now nice oh gosh how's this guy gonna look from the front i didn't even think of that i'm like oh gosh this silhouette from the front is gonna be really hard to do a new vocabulary topology okay i don't actually know how to explain topology because i've never done it like i know what it looks like it's so when you 3d model you use a bunch of different like you use a bunch of, you call them meshes in 3D models, but you use a bunch of different 3D objects to sculpt and create your, um, like your character, whoever it is, or whatever it is that you're making, right? But in the final, you don't want that because you want as little information in, like, the game as possible. Like, you don't want the file size to be huge. So you retopologize it. So you, like, it's almost like you put on, like, a layer of skin on top of your sculpt. And then that becomes your final thing instead. Does that is that right for you topologists? I don't know if that's 100% correct. Hi, Oz. <laughs> um, is that correct? I don't know if that's that's a correct um, description of topology. Yeah, I get you. Kind of is okay. Yeah, I know. I know what I know what topology looks like. I'm just like I, I have I struggle to to do it. It's basically it. Okay, epic. <laughs> interesting yeah there's a lot of there's a lot more i think that people don't really understand how many jobs in art there actually are like it's it's one of those things where it's like you want to be an artist there's no money in that that's wrong first of all second of all there's so many art jobs like there's so many jobs in every industry like it's like game art and like animation especially like i bet you didn't even know there was a like a like a cleanup artist <laughs> for animation there's just somebody who takes the actual illustrator's work and cleans it up they fix perspective they make they draw lines that's all they do right and then they're done and they hand it off to the animators right like the background artist cleanup artist right there's so much there's so many jobs like, again, like, the person who rigs. Like, it's not just one person either. It's multiple people. The people who rig. The people who, like, do the, like, modeling and they hand them off to the other artists, right? It's, it's, it's huge. It's a huge, like, pipeline. Like, you start with the concept artists and then you move on to the modelers. And the modelers hand it off to, like, the, like, there's, like, 
I don't actually know if the topologists and the modelers are two different jobs, but I know that the that the rigger is a different job than the modeler. And then there's the texture artists, and then there's the animators, and there's the you know, it's 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 different. Yeah, at a large scale, any task that would normally be a small step for an individual needs to be a separate job entirely. A hundred percent, yeah. There's a place in my heart for storyboard artists because I don't know what the thought of it sounds cool. Storyboarding is so cool. Like, I, I love storyboard artists. Animation comic artists. <laughs> no, a guy that textures jeans for a living. That's it. Yeah, yeah. There's like some texture artists, they're just known for one thing and then that's all they do. I, there's like one guy that my, an old prof of mine knew and he was known as the barrel guy because he was just really good at texturing barrels. So that's all he ever did. want to be a storyboarder. Storyboarders are really cool. I, I really like storyboarders. I think that it's like, that is a job that is very, like, saturated as well, but I think you can never run out of storyboarders. Like, there's so many, because especially with a storyboard team, it's not just one person who storyboards the whole thing. It's a bunch. So it's like, there's, there's a lot of positions for storyboarders. It's still not easy. <laughs> let me, let me, let me, let me set, like, the thing straight, right? It's not easy to get an art job, right? It's, it's, like, it is a very sought after and a very difficult market to enter. It's not, again, it's not impossible, but it's difficult, right? No matter what, um, art job you go for, but that isn't to say that you shouldn't do it, right? It's gonna be difficult. That's just something you should always keep in mind, is that it will not be a cakewalk. But if you really love it, then do it. You know? Most people don't even apply for the job they want. They just slight they just aim slightly off and move laterally. Yeah, exactly. It, that's I, I was talking about that earlier. It's like some people, especially if they want to be background artists, like they'll start as cleanup artists and then they like upgrade to a background artist later once they've had more experience in the field. Especially if you're a cleanup artist, you get a lot of experience looking at the actual background artist's work. You get a lot of like your your skill will build as well, which is like really important too. Right, so it's a rotating, right? That just tells you what direction the head is facing at, the numbers, right? This is a half view, right? A profile. One just means that it's facing directly at you. Yeah, if you've heard of the title, it's probably incredibly hard to get into. Character designer, storyboarding, yeah. I dislike pelvises. The pelvis is a really good landmark for drawing, actually. I actually very- I- Weirdly enough, I very much enjoy drawing pelvises. <laughs> they don't work, right? I'm pretty sure we sit on the- on the front of them. No. No, we sit on our ischium. We sit on the back of it. Our butt bone is the ischium. That's what we sit on. You're you sit real strange if you sit on the front of a pelvis. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Rather start small and build my way up with experience stuff, so I don't throw myself in the deep end. Yeah, hundred percent. You don't do rough sketches before a drawing. No, I do. You can just call me Jesse. Wink Canvas is the whole, like, you see my name down there next to my little avatar. I'm Jesse. There's multiple different 
<laughs> There's multiple different streamers on this channel, so like I'm just the one that usually is on Fridays. But yeah, that's the rough sketch. And then we did the, the more cleaned up stuff. This is the concept sheet. I'll just put the height here. I'll just say that this is it. Whoa. I kind of want to make them seven foot. Seven foot. Let's say seven foot two. Just for fun. Just to have that sense of scale somewhere. Your silhouette should be off to the side anyway. You shouldn't really have that be in the forefront. Might actually be better if I move. Whoopsie doopsie. I'm putting all these on different layers. So this is easier to read. Let me just move all of this over, actually. Hang on. So the spacing is better. No, because this is supposed to, this should go up here. Uh, I could keep it like this, like I could do that. But then it's a little bit awkward with the cutoff on the bottom. That's okay. Did you want to draw a character transformed into something else? Like how would you change characters now to being changed into something else? Every time that I hear, like, start from something and turn into something else, how would you draw that transition? I get, like, I get, like, like, brain blasts to, like, you know the, like, the, <laughs> the like, Akira meme? It's like, leave me alone! <laughs> that, like, I get flashbacks to Animorphs. <laughs> Akira, Akira! <laughs> like, it's just that, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Use metric? Yeah, we do, but like, I just recognize like feet and whatever. I recognize imperial better for heights. Yeah, I think of like transition from one thing to another. I'm like, oh, it's anamorphs. <laughs> We're back. I don't want to think about it. How does it sit? I feel bad for the. Oh, for, for the Dragonborn? That's a good question! That means I should probably draw it. Give me a second. I'll do that. Watch out tutorials now, but they're little to none in existence. That's because there's really no proper way to do it. It's one of those things that, like, if you know your anatomy, then drawing a transition's not that hard. It's all about studying anatomy. And then it's you having to come up with the logistics yourself. Like, it's not something where it's like, oh, this is how you draw a person transitioning from one thing to another. Because most people will approach that differently. It's just one of those things. Like, for me, I would study the anatomy first. And then I'm like, okay, so what's the difference between X, Y, and Z? And then I would switch it based on that. Yeah, it's hard to make a tutorial, tutorial off of something that's broad and varying, 100%. So it's like, like for me, I would just like study the anatomy and figure that out myself. I love and hate studying anatomy. It helps so much with the studying is so tedious. It's super true, but I think that it helps. Like for me personally, I think it helps that I love anatomy. Like I love studying it. I had a, I had a whole course in uni that was just about like, um... It was called Anatomy, Form, and Function. Like, that was literally what the, what the program was called. And it was just about, um, like, studying human anatomy. 
and I learned like the different parts of the skeleton. I learned how the muscle groups worked and stuff like that. Like it was very, very scientific. I loved that class. I still have the, the notes from it. Like it's one of my favorite things is just studying anatomy. It's just so fun. It helps a lot and I just find the, the I find it really interesting. I love bones. That's why I have a bunch of skulls. Like it's just it's so fun. <laughs> Studying out on my own, I don't really know where to start, so it gets overwhelming. Should I start with the bones or muscles? Something else. Start with the bones. Um, bones are a little bit easier to grasp, so start with the bones. I would say to start with your appendicular skeleton, because that's a little bit easier to grasp um, than your axial. You'll understand what that means when you study it. Um, I mean, it, it's kind of in the name, the appendicular skeleton, that's your appendages, and then your axial is like everything else, right? Everything in the appendicular skeleton comes in twos. It's like your arms, your collarbone, your um, your shoulder blades, stuff like that, right? That's all appendicular, right? But then everything that is in the axial only has one. So your skull, your spine. Um, yeah, your skull and your spine, right? That's, that's generally your axial. <laughs> no, the pelvis is not part of the axial. Your pelvis is your... Oh, the rib cage. That's still part of your your axial because it's one rib cage um but yeah that kind of thing what a creature based off of you you sound like a bone collector cryptid you know i'll take that as a compliment <laughs> With more than one skeleton uh no okay so it is one skeleton but there's different parts to the skeleton you could break it up into two parts so you have the axial skeleton which is stuff that deals with your vertebrae and stuff like that and then you have your appendicular skeleton which is stuff that deals with your appendages Someone give me Thai names. T H A I, Thai names. <laughs> like from names from Taiwan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> ethically sourced bone collector. All right, they are ethically sourced. Ideas or suggestions for body horror? Go over the top. Bend stuff in directions where it's not supposed to go. You can never have too many fingers. Those are my top suggestions. <laughs> oh, also, who said fingers have to be on the hands? There you go. Nira? Oh, that's cute. I do like that. Taiwan or Thailand? Oh, my bad, Thailand. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think that they're happy all the time. They're a very happy character. Happy to see you. Yeah, they're precious. <laughs> I personally like to do a little expression things off to the side to just give you an idea of what this character is like. They're not really extensive or anything, they're just like... They're just there to give you like an idea of what this character is like. God, the name's confused too. I'm <laughs> I'm Chinese. I'm Chinese. <laughs> I'm Chinese Filipino. <laughs> Is that a Pinoy reference? <laughs> it's a very contrasting mood. The cute tail wag and fingers don't have to be on the hands at the same time. Yeah, that's about right. 
That's about me in a nutshell. Oh, I forgot their little hand. My bad. Half Chinese, nice. Yeah, no, I don't, I'm, I'm not good with geography. That's one thing that I'm actually really, really bad at is geography. Everything re relating to geography, I'm so bad at. I couldn't tell you what, I, I couldn't tell you what the capital city of like anything in Canada is other than like, I am in Canada. I, I'm, I'm Canadian. I couldn't tell you what the capital city of anything was unless it's like, Ontario or like Quebec because Quebec is just Quebec City like everybody knows that I know that Yellowknife is one of them I know that White Horse is another one I don't know where they are <laughs> Filipino let's go major in geography nope I'm bad at geography I can't I don't know anything about geography I failed uh, geography when I was in like fourth grade I passed it in high school but that's just because I had I, I studied <laughs> and I was like ain't no way I'm gonna fail this thing again I was determined Terrible that too. We got 50 to learn. I don't even know where half of your states are. I don't know if you know what half of your states are. Like, so, like, if you tell me, I'm like, sure, I know what that is. But like, I don't know off the top of my head. I like, heck not. I don't know any of that. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know anything about that. Someone's like, you know this state? I was like, you know this city? I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's like, could you tell me where Wyoming is? I'm like, no, I don't know where Wyoming is. I'm like, could you tell me where Washington is? I'm like, nope. I just know that there's a place called Washington. Can the characters you have more than one person or animal at a time? Sure, but usually what you want is to have, like, um, each individual character to have their own kind of character sheet. Like, you don't want to overwhelm the whole thing. Like, if you have, like, a little companion that's a little bit important, sure, you can have it on there, but it's, like, it shouldn't be a focal point. Like, it should be, like, an, oh, yeah, this is, like, a little companion. Or it's, like, if the compa- here, here's- mm, okay, so if the companion is vital to the design of the character that this is focusing on, then yes. If not, then no. Like, if you have, like, a section on their bot- There's a character that I designed for my partner. This is a, another one of his D&D characters. It's this, um, it's this, an Eldrin elf named Pierce. And Pierce has a section on his body. He has a tattoo. He has an Eldritch tattoo. And that Eldritch tattoo is what he uses to summon and de-summon his... Uh, he's Drake Warden Ranger, so he has a little dragon with him, right? So if I was to draw a character concept sheet for him, which I do, I have a character concept sheet for him, um, like a proper one, then I would have a section on there where there would be puddles, and, which is the name of the dragon. I would have a section on there where puddles is coming out of the tattoo. So then, yes, I would have a second character on there. But if he didn't have that tattoo and Puddles was just a separate entity, then no. Like, for, for a proper concept sheet, no. I wouldn't do that. Each character should have their own little section. Like, they shouldn't have, like, multiple characters to a sheet kind of thing, you know? a pretty neato character oh i'm overtime <laughs> i didn't even notice all right y'all thank you all so so much for joining um i didn't like i didn't even see the time oh, my gosh i love designing um thank you all so so much for joining um If you don't know too much about the studio, sorry, I forgot I we do an ad read at the end too. If you don't know too much about the studio, don't know too much about us. Hi, welcome. We are Wing Canvas. Um we um are not only a YouTube channel, we are also an art studio. If you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, wingcanvas.com. Um, where is it? There it is. Wingcanvas.com. Check out the classes that we have. We are having summer camps coming up pretty soon. Um so if you'd like to check those out, 
I will all be coming up soon. I'm teaching figure drawing in comics and manga. If you'd like to check out the two week programs that we have for the intensives, we also have smaller camps if you'd like to check out. And we also have classes that are still running on the weekends and some during the weekdays. If you'd like to check out if you want to support the channel, support free arts education, and get the working file of anything that I have, you're going to have to join our Patreon. Um, Patreon or become a Wing Canvas member. Or if you're just okay with just the JPEG, you can join our Discord. I have for Discord. You can come and chat with other fellow art members and also submit for the art submissions in the beginning of streams. Come say hi. Come chat with some of us. I'm in there sometimes. Um, but if you want to chat with me properly, there is a membership chat that I am in most of the time. Next week, what we are going to be doing, that's a good question. Let's check that really quickly. Next week, we will be, oh, well, Sunday, uh, Magical Girls is going to be with Iggy, looks like. Um, ah, and then next week, oh, looks like there's no stream on the 30th. Um, so we will have no stream on June 30th. It looks like it's not scheduled. So the week after will be the art roast stream. If you would like to get your ro art roasted, uh, which will most likely just be a very stern crit, um, from me and Josh. Josh will be joining us this time. Um, that will be in a couple weeks and you can submit your work through the link in our discord. Um, there's a Google forums section where you can submit your work. Please make sure that you share the folder and please make sure that it is accessible to other people. Um, and make sure that it is a Google folder. Google Drive folder. Please. Please. Okay, I'm getting close to my mic for this. Google Drive folder. Make sure that you hit the big blue share button. And make sure that the link is accessible to everybody. Thank you. We don't want it to just be a link that we cannot open. Yes. Brilliant. All right. But thank you all so, so much for joining. And I'll see y'all in a couple of weeks. Au revoir. Bye-bye. <laughs>